Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Monday and it is time for Monday view. The pencils that we have chosen this week are the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor colored pencils and that is what we are going to review today as well as color in the art and read from Art Matters. First of all let's zoom you in a little bit on the color chart so that you can see the pencils a little better. Uh, this one. Zoom in. There we go. All right. Now, as you can see, we have a really wide selection of colors in our yellows, our oranges, into our reds, a really good selection of reds, into our pink tones, and then into our purples, our blues, our blue greens, our greens into our brown greens and our browns, our brown yellows and our brown reds, into our grays and blacks and whites. So we have a really good selection of colors uh, for a 72 set. Um, we are going to do the testing on this set, so I'm actually going to zoom you in just a little bit further so that you can see the test areas. I didn't do the testing on this sheet, so we're going to do that together. All right. So there we have our water, our smudge, our blend, rainbow, blender, and white. All right, so we're going to grab a yellow. So I think it's this one that I want. Yes, maybe this le lemon cadmium. I think that'd be a little light. So we're going to we're going to work with light chrome, and then for our red, we're going to go with Scarlet Lake, and then for our blue, we're going to go with oh Mr. Choo Choo Train. <laughs> um, light cobalt blue. So those are our our colors that we're going to use. I'm going to grab my water brush here. Make sure it still has some water in it. Yes, it does. <laughs> Nothing worse than a water brush that has no water in it. So these do say that they are light fast and water resistant. They are a four millimeter core. They do have uh, the color name as well as the number on the pencil. They are an oil-based pencil, so um, you're not going to get the wax bloom that you would from a wax-based pencil, such as the Prismacolors. And they just lay down just so nicely. Working with the yellow, and I'm just building that color up to fill in the space the same way that I would if I was coloring. The reason why I do a water test as well as a smudge test, the water test is because I do enjoy adding some sparkle. And to add sparkle, of course, I use things that are water-based, such as Winkastella, um, stickles, things like that. And those are all water-based. And if your pencils are not water-resistant, you will find that they run a little bit when you add the water-based product to it. This is a little bit oranger than I wanted, but that's okay. We'll work with it. We may need to switch it out when we get to the rainbow colors, though, because we don't want it to be too orange to make an orange. You know what I mean? It's not too bad, though. Once you add a couple of layers, it's not as orange as it looked. Still a little oranger than I like. So I may have to switch that out. I didn't look at the chart before I grabbed colors, of course. Because, you know, that would have been smart. The reason why I do a smudge test is because uh, my hands sometimes have a tendency to 
move colors when I rub my hands across the page. So, and that's a, just a chemical makeup of my skin. So, it may not do that for you. It is definitely something that is very personal to each person. Everybody's chemical makeup is a little bit different. All right, so there we have our red, yellow, and blue. And I'm going to actually quickly take a look here and pull a proper red. I think I want Pale Geranium Lake instead of what I have here. Dark Carmine. Dark Carmine's a good one too. So we're going to use Dark Carmine instead for the rest of this. All right, so they do state that they are water resistant. So we will see. Hopefully there will not be any movement. And I'm not seeing any movement in the yellow or the red. or the blue. So they are water resistant, which is fantastic. There are very, very few um, colored pencils out there that are water resistant. Now we're going to do the smudge test. And like I said, this test is very um, specific to myself. You, When you do this test, your colors may not move. It all depends upon the uh, chemical makeup in the um, in your skin. So when you sweat or the oils of your skin, that sort of thing, it all depends upon that chemical makeup on whether or not these are going to move. Yeah, that's a much better red. And as you can tell, they are an oil-based pencil, so you do have to build that color up. You can't just go with one and done. Well, you can. It's just going to have a very small amount of color. Where if you do several layers, you're going to get an intensity of color. Another thing that I have found with a lot of pencils is the uh, paper is very important. You know, different papers will yield different color payouts. And with an oil-based pencil, you do want a little bit of tooth so that you can build that color up. like that. Get that all filled in. The color built up to where I would typically stop. And then we're just going to take our finger and we're going to rub across it. And it does smudge just a slight bit. So I do have to be careful when I am coloring to make sure that I don't go over those areas. Now we're going to do our three color blend and we're going to start with light carmine then we're going to go into matter rose matter lake and then pink matter lake. So this is a gradient blend of three colors going from the darkest to the lightest. Again, this is an oil based pencil so you are going to have to build those colors up. Now, because this is going to be a gradient blend and a three color blend and not a blender blend, I am going to put down the heaviest layers where I want it to be dark. And then I'm going to feather out with the color so that I have something to blend into with the next color. So 
so that you get that seamless blend. This is the longest part, <laughs> building those colors up. If you don't have the patience to build the colors up, I would suggest that uh, an oil-based pencil may not be the best pencil for you. Or if you like to have really light, um, transparent color layers, then an oil-based pencil will work for you. So as you can see, just a one light layer is very, very light. And a lot of people color with very light uh, colors and very light layers. And it gives it a very soft look. But if you want that deep, vibrant color, you're going to have to layer those colors up. All right, now the next color we're going to use is Rose Matter Lake. We're just going to go into that part that we feathered out. And we're just going to feather out from there. Just blending those colors together. And then I'm going back to the uh, light carmine. And we're just going to fill it in to those areas that we missed. And just giving it a nice blend. And again with the Pink Matter Lake. I think that's, no, Rose Matter Lake, sorry. And then we're just going to bring that out into our lightest area there. And then we're going to take our Pink Matter Lake. We're going to go into the previous color. It looks like I need to darken up an area there. And as you can see, you can easily blend these colors together to get that tri-blend. I'm just going to darken this area up here with the Rose Matter Lake just to give a consistent blend of color. Like so. And just a little bit more. So definitely does blend in a gradient blend quite nicely. All right, so for our rainbow blend, we're going to go back to our three colors here. So we're going to start off with the dark carmine. Again, going to build this color up. So it looks really thin to start off with, which is fine. I'm using a very light hand to build that color up. I'm just going to go a little bit heavier on this side here. Now remember, going from a red to a yellow you're going to get more of a red-orange instead of a yellow-orange. 
If you want more of a yellow orange, start with your yellow. All right, now we're going into the light chrome. Now, typically, I would bring that out first, but the uh, for some reason, I've noticed with these pencils, they don't pick up a lot of the darker colors very much, which is great. So as you can see here, the difference between the starting off with the yellow and starting off with the red. So uh, there's two different colors of orange there, the red orange and the yellow orange. I'm just going to fill that in a little bit more, make sure that we have all the white spot covered. Now we're going to go out this way. And then we're going to start in the yellow with the blue. And again, the same same concept. If you start off with your yellow, you're going to get a yellow green. If you start off with your blue, you're going to get a blue green. So the darker color will give a darker green. Also depends upon the layers. So if you're going to layer more blue in than yellow, you're going to get a darker green. Let's try to make this even. <laughs> and I am using a very light hand. I'm not squishing these colors together. I'm building the color into each other. Like that. So it definitely does do the rainbow. So from red to orange to yellow to green to blue. So it definitely does do that. Now we're going to try um, blending with a blender. So Lyra has their own blender, but I couldn't find my Lyra blender. So we're going to use the Caran d'Ache blender and we'll see how well that works. So we're going to use this blend for the blender blend. And we're going to start off with the dark tone. Now with the blender, you got to remember to have enough pigment on the page for the blender to move that together. Uh, if you don't have enough pigment down, the blender has nothing to move. So we're going to make sure that we have plenty of pigment down for the blender to move that color. A blender it will also burnish your page. So if you have other colors to add, oops, sorry, I'm off screen. If you have other colors to add, make sure that you give yourself enough, um, a light enough blend that you're not burnishing. So I typically don't use the blender pencil until I am done an area. Especially if the pencils move, I will use the blender pencil to fill in the white spot so that I don't move that and to, to burnish the color into the page so I don't move the color along. The Caran d'Ache blender does allow uh, quite a bit of water resistance as well. So if you're using a colored pencil that is not water resistant and you want to use Winkostella or something on there to make it pretty, 
um, make sure that you go over it with your Caran d'Ache blender first and then you'll have some water resistance. Okay, so I have the Caran d'Ache bright stick here and we're going to start in the light and I'm not pressing hard. I'm just going to start moving that light pigment over into the medium pigment. Moving that medium pigment into the dark pigment. And then vice versa, moving it back. And just creating that, that blend. I'm just going to do the whole thing now. And I'm going to go the opposite direction. So I'm going to go this way. which will eliminate any of the lines that I've put in with going the other way. Like so. So it does move it. It doesn't do as clean as that. Um, but it does move it into the appropriate areas to create that blend. Now, Lyra has a fairly nice white as well. So we're going to do the same thing here, but we're going to use the white. Now, remember, if you're going to use a white pencil to do your blend, the colors will become muted a little bit by the white. Um, there are some white pencils out there that have very, very little pigment in them, and those will not mute your colors very much. But if your white has a lot of pigment in it, you will find that your colors are are muted down a lot. So again, just putting in enough color for the white to actually move the color into the other areas. And then our dark pink. Like so. And then our light pink. Now I'm bringing it right up against it, but I'm not overlapping it. Okay. Unlike here, where I overlapped things. I'm not overlapping this. I want to use the um, blender pencil or the pencil that I'm going to use to blend uh, to be the connector. All right, so now we have our white. Now we're going to go the opposite direction. We're not going to go back and forth with the white. We're going to go up and down. This is definitely dulling it down, but I don't see a lot of movement into the next color. From the previous color. So it does definitely dull it down. It does move it a little bit, but it doesn't move it as much as even the Caran d'Ache blender has moved it. So I would definitely say that using the white as a blender may not be the best option. So water resistance, yes. Uh, smudge resistance for me, no. But like I said, this is very uh, dependent on yourself. Uh, blendability, absolutely. It does a wonderful um, gradient blend as well as a rainbow blend. It does work okay with the Caran d'Ache blender. Does not work so well with the white. I'm going to actually grab the Derwent blender and we're going to use the Derwent blender up here and see if that does any better 
than the Caran d'Ache. Because the Caran d'Ache blender is a wonderful blender, but it is a wax-based blender and it works beautifully on wax-based crowns. Sometimes it works really well on uh, oil-based as well. Um, I think it definitely depends upon how hard you're pressing on it and how much pigment you have on the page. The Derwent Blender um, I have always found works really well for oil-based pencils. And as you can see, it blended that together without a problem. So I think, let's try down here. Yeah, I think the Derwent blender would probably work better for the Caran d'Ache, or not the Caran d'Ache, the Lyra. Um, I know the Lyra pencils do have their own blender, and I do believe it works quite well with the pencils. I just could not find mine, so it's probably in the bag somewhere. So definitely the Derwent blender worked a lot better than the white as well as it worked a, a nominal a little bit better than the bl the Caran d'Ache blender. Like I said they are a four mil millimeter core. They are an oil based pencil and they are made in Germany. They do say that they are light fast as well as water resist. I'm not going to test the light fastness but we did test the water resist and they did resist water. Right now on Amazon you can purchase a 72 set for approximately $79.37 which works out to be $1.10 per pencil which is pretty good. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for them but I bought mine a few years ago. So A really nice set of pencils and as you can see down here um, the way that they color is just beautifully. They have a fantastic amount of color in them, um, different colors as well as different gradients of each color. So that's fantastic. I have always really enjoyed the Lyra colors and the Lyra pencils. So I've, I've never had an issue coloring with them. All right, so we're going to move on to the, the Art Matters. Uh, last week we did this one here. Uh, this week we will be doing this one here. It says, life is, is sometimes hard. Things go wrong in life and in love and in business and in fresh friendship and in health and in all the other ways that life can go wrong. And when things get tough, this is what you should do. Make good art. I'm serious. All right, so... We're going to start on, what's this one? I'm going to start on her. So we've got medium flesh here. And of course, I've zoomed out. So I'm going to move that so that I can. So that I can actually be comfortable. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start on her. We're going to start with medium flesh. We're going to make her a little bit pale, but we want to give her some shadows as well because she's frightened. And all the blood fall goes out of your face when you're frightened. <laughs> But we do want to give her some contrast. So. And of course, this is not a coloring book. So you will find that a lot of times you're not going to be able to put as many layers into your coloring as you would normally on a regular coloring book. 
So make sure that you get the colors that you want down before burnishing or putting too much pressure on your dark, your lighter colors. All right, now we're going to use light flesh. Like I said, she is frightened. So we're actually going to blend this with some white because I want it to have that lighter, ghostly, ghastly white color. Might actually even use a little bit of gray just to make her a little bit ashen. Like she'd seen a ghost type of color. Now we're going to use cool gray light. No, that's not it. That's it. We're just going to give her a little bit of a gray tinge. Because for some reason, we become very pale when things frighten us. It just seems like all the blood flows somewhere else. It says, yep, nope, we're out of here. <laughs> all right. Make sure that you have your pay piece of paper behind your page so that you do not uh, end up moving the color from the previous page onto another page. Alright, now we're going to do her hair. And we're going to use Van Dyke Brown. So, and a little bit of this one here, which is raw umber for our highlight area. And then we're going to do her shirt. We're going to start off with dark carmine.
so. And now remember that this is not a coloring book. So you will find that the artist has drawn things in a manner of which they're already shaded. So it already looks like it should just without color. So we add the color in for him. Chris Riddell is a wonderful artist. Um, Neil Gaiman is a fantastic writer as well. And both of them collaborating together on books is just magical. All right, now the next color I'm going to use is the light carmine. Just going to finish her shirt here. And of course, the sun is coming in and washing out the camera. I'm sorry about that. Lyras are also a, a wonderful way to uh, do one pencil coloring. So you can easily get um, a one pencil gradients with these pencils. Um, pretty much with all pencils you can do that, but I do find that the wax pencils uh, sometimes have issue with separation and they like to sink into the paper and have that white spot show through a little bit more than you want. All right, there's her t-shirt done. Now the parchment that she's working on. So we're going to take cream and gold ochre. And we're going to color this as if it's a parchment. We're going to take our gold ochre We're going to take, let's do her pencil in purple. So we're going to use violet for her pencil. Just to give it a little bit of color there. Then we're going to take our dark brown here. It's a little too red. Ooh, that's a lot of red. Where is... Need dark sepia is what I'm looking for. There's medium black. Hmm. 
not seeing my dog Sepia. I know it's here. It's Venetian. So it must be. Ah, there it is. So I'm going to use dark sepia for the edge of the table here. Shadow over there as well. I'm just going to turn the page a little bit here. We're going to put in a shadow of her. And then on this side, we're going to put in this shadow there as well. So shadow under her arm. And then up the paper. And then this shadow from our creepy dude. Then we're going to use brown ochre. Right over top of the shadow. Filling in that desk. So, and then the same over here. All right. And then we've got some papers back here as well. I am not good with drawing anything, so we're not going to put too much on them. We might put some splotches of color. And then we'll just do a few few bits of different colors. On the biggest one here. And let's go a little bit more on the pink here. Blending that into the purple. And then a little bit of green, because why not? And then we'll just add a little bit more of the blue. So, a little bit of blue here, a little bit of blue there. We'll add a little bit of red. Just 
So just basically throwing down some color. On the art pieces in the background there. Then we're going to take our gray. Uh, this one here is green gray and we're just going to do the entire background with a layer of the green gray. Try to make sure that my page is all the way in there. Again, I'm just being very light. We just want to darken that background with an eerie kind of color. Yes, I know I'm going right over top of that creepy little hand, but that's okay. We're going to be coming back through with black. He's got the creepy dude going all the way up. And like I said, I'm just putting one quick light layer just to give that kind of misty creepy look. Alright, now we're going to take our black and we're going to start filling in some of the creepy dude. I'm just going in the same direction that Chris has drawn and just filling it in, going heavier over the lines that Chris has drawn. Same with down here, we're going to go with the lines Chris has drawn, but we're going to go in between them as well with a lighter color. Now this area here is meant to be very dark, so we're going to take our pen, our pencil and we're just going to color the whole area very, very heavily. Excuse me. All right. Then we're going to move over to this side. He's going to make his arm a little bit thicker there. Skinny arms are just creepy. <laughs> Not like shadow arms aren't creepy or something, but you know. Then again through here with a really thick black color. 
and I'm going to just drag that down a little bit. All right, so there is our creepy guy. And I'm going to zoom you out so you can see it all, all together there. So it says, life is sometimes hard. Things go wrong in life and in love and in business and in friendships and in health and in all the other ways that life can go wrong. And when things get tough, this is what you should do. Make good art. I'm serious. And that is it for today. We will be co continuing on with the next part of the book on um, next Monday. So there we have our things going wrong page. Until next time, uh, of course, always remember to like, comment, and subscribe to any YouTube artists that you enjoy, including myself. And of course, always remember to relax, color, and stay safe, everyone. Until next time, bye-bye for now.